Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer on this Wednesday, the 26th of August. As we come together, as we uh, give thanks to God for the night that has been, as we look forward to the day which is to come, let us collect our thoughts, spend a moment in stillness before we begin our prayers. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breath. You have found a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands, and put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That the, the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray of one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for this morning is part of Psalm 119, verses 105 to 128. O oh, deal with your servant, according to your faithful love. Your word is a lantern to my feet, and a light upon my path. I have sworn and will fulfil it, to keep your righteous judgments. I am troubled above measure. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. I accept the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My soul is ever in my hand. Yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your testimonies have I claimed as my heritage forever, for they are the very joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to, your, to fulfill your statutes, always, even to, the end, to, to, even to the end. I hate those who are double-minded, but your law do I love. You are my hiding place and my shield, and my hope is in your word. Away from me, you wicked. I will keep the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your promise that I may live, and let me not be disappointed in my hope. Hold me up and I shall be saved, and my delight shall be ever in your statutes. You set at naught those that depart from your statutes, for their deceiving is in vain. You consider all, thing, all the wicked as dross, Therefore I will love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. I have done what is just and right. O oh, give me not over to my oppressors. Stand surety for your servant's good. Let not the proud oppress me. My eyes fail with the watching for your salvation and for your righteous promise. So the dog's mucking about. <clears throat> o oh, deal with your servant according to your faithful love, and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. O oh, grant me understanding, that I may know your testimonies. It is time for you to act, O oh Lord, for you frustrate their law. Therefore I love your commandments above gold, even much fine gold. Therefore I direct my steps by all your precepts, and all wa false ways I utterly abhor. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. O oh, deal with your servant, according to your faithful love. Our Old Testament is a continuation of the second book of the prophet Samuel, chapter 6, verses 1 to 19. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal Judah, 
to bring up from there the Ark of the Covenant, which is called by the name of the Lord of Hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the Ark of, the, of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abadab, which was of, on the hill. Uzzah and Aho and the sons of Abadab were driving the new cart with the Ark of God, and Aho went to the front of the Ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Na Nacon, Uzzah reached out his hand to the Ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God struck him there because he reached out his hand to the Ark, and he died there beside the Ark of God. They was angry because the Lord had burst forth with an outburst upon Uzzah, so the place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. They was afraid of the Lord that day. He said, How can the Ark of the Lord come into my care? So David was, was unwilling to take the Ark of the Lord into his care in the city of David. Instead, David took it to, into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The Ark of the Lord remained in the house of e Obed-Edom the Gittite for three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. It was told, King David, uh, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the Ark of God. So David went and brought the Ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the Ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and the fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the Ark of the Lord with shouting and with a sound of trumpet. As the Ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the Ark of the Lord and set it in its place, inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord whilst he may be found. Call upon him whilst he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. <clears throat> Our New Testament reading is a continuation of the book of the Acts, uh, chapter 7, verses 17 to 43. But as the time drew near for the fulfilment of the promise that God had made to Abraham, our people in Egypt incre increased and multiplied until another king, who had not known Joseph, ruled over Egypt. He dealt crafty with our race and forced our ancestors to abandon their infants so that they would die. At this time Moses was born, and he was beautiful before God. For three months he was brought up in his father's house, and when, he was a, and when he was abandoned, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. So Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in his words and deeds. When he was 40 years old, he came, it came into his heart to visit his relatives, the Israelites. When he saw one of them being wronged, he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. He supposed that his kinsfolk would understand that God, through him, was rescuing them, but they did not understand. The next day he came to, his, to some of them as they were quarrelling and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, we are brothers. Why are you wronging each other? But the man who was, wrong, who was, who was wronging his neighbour pushed Moses aside, saying, Who made you a ruler and judge over us? 
Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When he heard this, Moses fled and became a resident alien in the land of Midian. There he became the father of two sons. Now when forty years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, in the flames of the burning bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight, and he approached it to look. There came the voice of the Lord. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses began to tremble and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I, am surely, I have surely seen the mistreatment of my people who are in Egypt and heard their groaning. I have come down to rescue them. Come now, I will send you to Egypt. It was this Moses whom they rejected when they said, Who made you a ruler and judge? And whom God now sent as both ruler and liberator <coughs> through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out, having performed wonders and signs in Egypt at the Red Sea. Uh, so at the Red Sea and in the wilderness in the 40, for 40 years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up a prophet for you from, from your own people as he raised me up. He is the one who was in the congregation of the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him about Sinai. And it was our ancestors, and he received living oracles to give to us. Our ancestors were unwilling to obey him. Instead, they pushed him aside, and in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make gods for us, who will lead the way for us. As for this Moses, who led us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. At that time they made a calf, offered a sacrifice to the idol, and reveled in the works of their hands. But God turned away from them and handed them over to worship the host of heaven, as it was written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer me a slain, to offer to me slain victims and sacrifices for forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? No, you took along the tent of Moloch and the star of your god Replan, the images that you made to worship. So I will, remo I will remove you beyond Babylon. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was beginning, is, sorry, Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to repair his ways, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we greet this new day, we ask that you be with us. Be with us in our thoughts, guide our actions. Help us to speak well of you and well to others. Help us to show compassion to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are being affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who are in self-isolation. We pray for those who are in quarantine. We pray for those who are shielding. We pray for all who are in hospital and for those who have died. 
We pray for those who are anxious and worried about schools returning. We pray for those who are placed in authority, who are trying to work out the best course of action. We pray for those who are still furloughed. We pray for those who have lost their jobs because of this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray for peace in this world. We pray for an end to violence and an end to suffering. We pray for those who have been protesting against the latest shooting in America. We pray for those who are trying to keep the peace. We pray for compassion, for kindness, for tolerance, for an end to gun violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are working to broker peace. We pray for diplomats, for peacekeepers, for those who are working in great or small measures to try to reconcile those to each other. We pray for those who harbour hatred in their hearts that they learn to forgive. We pray for those who have wronged others that they may seek forgiveness. We look to the coming of your kingdom where there be no more war, no more violence, no more hurt, no more pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, we pray for those who are homeless at this time, for those who have been living rough, for those who are struggling to make ends meet, for those who are anxious about their homes, for those who are using the food bank, and for those who are struggling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, holy, strong, holy and immortal, as we journey through this day, may we show your love to all whom we meet. May we show kindness and compassion to all whom we deal with. May we embody that which your Son has taught us. May we show the world the compassion that you have shown us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing us mercy and pity. Mercy grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So let us pray of confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. To, uh, please do join me this evening at 5pm for evening prayer. And just to say that churches will be open for private individual prayer uh, during today. So please do come along if you wish to spend some time in quiet prayer and reflection. Um, St Mary's will be opening slightly later as I have a funeral uh, video visit which I'll be doing initially and I will open up as soon as I can. But until we can see each other again, God bless, stay safe and have a very good day.